PK52, the Saturday morning meeting, part two of the Texas countdown to Labor Day weekend. Hey, I'm inside the truck right now, and it's almost ridiculous. You're outside, you got the most durable truck that's ever been made. You get inside, and I don't know, let me come up with a word, Lexus-like. The seats are contoured, they shape to your back. I love going to the transmission. I, I still remember the first time I had my dad in an automatic transmission four-wheel drive Toyota truck. And I said, Dad, watch this. And I went over and I went into shift mode. And I said, remember back in the old trucks, Dad, we're coming down the hill and you used to put it in first gear and it says, son, don't, don't burn the brakes up. Let, it, let the engine work for you. Well, you know what? I haven't lost anything. So if I had my dad or somebody's grandfather in this truck, I could go down there, I could shift into first gear, and I could physically use engine braking coming down a hill when I'm going hunting, when I'm going fishing, just like the old school standard transmissions. Flip it over into automatic and it becomes a very fuel efficient transmission. We talked last week about the ECT button, which is right here. Pushing that button doesn't give me more acceleration. Remember, if you go heavy to the throttle, the truck knows exactly what you're trying to do and it'll give you the best performance it possibly can. However, depressing that into the power button, if you normally would shift at 3200 RPMs, it's going to expand the shift to a higher RPM so you get a little bit about a better torque release which with each gear shift. So the only downside of this is, and I and I drive with people all the time that leave this on all the time, yeah, it just makes the truck more powerful. Now, no, it doesn't. It, it doesn't. It burns more fuel. But you know what? If you're using this and maybe you're pulling a downgrade, uh, using a trailer or going uphill, that's a button that you can use. Four-wheel drive on demand. Man, when I first started selling Toyota trucks, you'd have to go outside, lock the manual hubs in the front, then you'd shift it into four-wheel drive. But these things have changed now. This is an on-demand four-wheel drive system with a transfer case. You can be going up to 65 miles an hour and wag this thing into four-wheel drive high. My story is, if you're running 65 miles an hour and all of a sudden you realize, here's an epiphany, I need four-wheel drive, you need to pull over and let me out because you're not taking care of my safety. But I can shift on the fly. If I want to go to four-wheel drive low range, I go I stop the vehicle, I go to neutral, low range, and it multiplies the torque, 2.6 to 1. So think about your torque rating being multiplied mathematically. So that's that pulling the stump out of the ground, climbing that one hill, along with all the safety features that comes in this truck. So I'm going to get from point A to point B before I go fishing. And so I've got the star safety system. And I think in every single video that we do, we've got to bring up star safety system. Think about a pickup truck, all the weights up front. I've got a drive system up front. And then the bed is really just an empty piece of composite and metal in the back. So it's not a very balanced vehicle. This is made as a cargo or utilitarian vehicle. So when I'm driving down the highway, the first thing I have is a four channel ABS system. If I have to lock the brakes up at any time, it modulates or pulses the brakes so that I still have control of the vehicle. Because of that ABS system, then we go with electronic brake force distribution. Now think about this. This truck right here has really nothing in the back of it. But when I start loading payload or I start loading stuff in the back of the truck, what you're going to find is that you're amplifying the weight to the back and electronic brake force distribution will move some of the braking prowess to the rear. It will balance that out. When I'm turning on the highway, it's gonna have a little bit more roll than a car. It's higher off the ground. It's just a natural thing. But I've got a lateral gravitational sensor in the electronic brake force distribution. So when I'm turning, it knows the gravity is pushed to the outside so it can readjust the brakes based upon what I'm doing in the truck. I don't know. It seems like if you're gonna have fun over a weekend, you might wanna arrive safely. And that's what star safety is all about. Brake assist, I got a big old shoe full of mud. I've got ice or snow on my foot because, you know, we drive in, in, the, in the off seasons and I come up and, and my foot hits the brake and it slips on the pedal. On the pedal, not off the pedal, but on the pedal and I really didn't go hard enough or deep enough to the floor to stop the vehicle. But with that rapid strike of my foot, with that panic strike, with that quick strike of the brake pedal, the truck knows that I wanted 100% efficiency and immediately uses ABS to give me that stopping power that I intended. Vehicle stability control, nothing's better than that. You're driving down the highway and the rear end starts to swing around because you're going a little too fast, you're a little too anxious. Well, here's the deal. As soon as that rear end goes out, which is understeer, it's going to utilize the brakes to pull that rear end back in. And what it does is it says, where are you pointed the steering wheel? 
And if you get out of camber, it's going to pull the truck back in position again. If you get a spin, so that's pushing. If you get a spin and the truck's starting to spin, then if it starts to kick out, it'll bring it back. So understeer, turning and it's trying to run through the corner. And what it'll do, slow you down so you can make the corner where you're steering or oversteer where the, it, the rear end starts to kick out like on ice and snow or maybe gravel and it'll pull that rear end back in. <laughs> Traction control. So there, we're, we're gonna break this down and I know we're going a little deep today, let's break it down. Track, rear wheel drive, if one wheel starts to slip, the differential wants to put the power to that wheel. We know that power goes to the wheel that's slipping. So what's gonna happen is, as that wheel starts to slip, the ABS is gonna go It's gonna hold that wheel and the other wheel seems to have less grip on it. It's going to put the power to the wheel that actually has traction. Back across the axle, back across the axle. I'll go shook, 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 shuck a con, shuck a con. So go with traction control. Now you're good. However, I may be in a situation that I don't need four-wheel drive. Remember, when I'm in four-wheel drive in a transfer case equipped vehicle, I can't steer on hard packed surfaces like asphalt or concrete, hard packed dirt or stone because it's gonna bind the front wheels. But if I go track off on this vehicle, then I'm in auto LSD, ALSD to the rear wheels, which is traction control without the throttle kill. Remember, whoa, whoa trying to slow the spin down. So it becomes on that rear axle. Perfect, perfect setup if you're pulling a boat up a ramp and then you have to drive through an asphalt parking lot to stop and wipe your boat down. So you wouldn't have to turn your four wheel drive off but I do have four wheel drive, four wheel on demand, all four wheels giving you tremendous off-road ability. Man, I, I tell you, it seems like if you can get a customer to sit here and interact with you on this truck, when they look inside and they know the value of a Toyota and they see the build out, they hear how quiet it runs down the road and you have a little bit of place on your demo drive where you let them put it in four wheel drive and they come back and go, man, I was in four wheel drive. It doesn't matter if you've ever taken a truck off-road it doesn't matter at all. What matters is that you know with a Toyota truck, you can go anywhere you want to go. PK52, the Saturday morning meeting, rocking an SR5 2017 Tacoma.